So in this video, I want to talk about patterns of reaction. So it is sort of, a, I like to refer to it as a chemical love story of some sort. So we have five different patterns that we're going to talk about. Combination, otherwise known as synthesis, decomposition, and then single and double replacement, and finally, where things get really hot and spicy, combustion. Let's start with combination, otherwise known as synthesis. You start with two separate things, you end up with one product. Two folks meet each other, and they hit it off, the next thing you know, they're a couple. Just like hydrogen gas with oxygen gas, when they interact, they give off a rather explosive reaction and produce water as a result. And then you have decomposition, which is sort of the opposite process. So, you know, two people meet, hit it off. Next thing you know, they're planning to go to the big dance, winter ball, prom, whatever it is. It doesn't always happen. Somebody gets in a fight. He didn't say hi to me, he didn't call me, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. Something happened. Can't match the, the tie and cummerbund to the dress. Who knows what it is? Something happens, there's fallout. A couple, a compound, breaks into smaller parts. So you start with one thing and you end up with multiple products. So here's an example with potassium chlorate, which by the way, is a solid rocket fuel additive because it produces oxygen when it decomposes. So here we have one compound that breaks down into a smaller compound and an element. So it doesn't always have to be just pure elements, but it, we start with one thing and we end up with more than one thing. Right, so, so the falling in love and the breaking up. The other patterns of reaction. Single replacement, double replacement. Let's talk about single replacement. So single replacement is where we have some pure element and a compound. And we still end up with a compound and a pure element. It's just who's in the compound and who's not changes. So this is the person who is so hip, so cool, is so popular. They don't need to get a date to go to the dance because they're going to leave with somebody else's and somebody's going to go home not happy. Okay, Kind of a tragedy. Uh, so... Notice they use the letter M to indicate metal. If it's a metal that is more reactive than what's in the compound, and there is a laundry list of who's more reactive and who's less reactive. If it's a more reactive metal, it's going to kick out the metallic part of the compound. And so we have a new compound, and the metal that was originally, you know, the first half of the original compound is going home alone. So here we have aluminum and copper sulfate. So if I drop pure aluminum into a copper sulfate solution, what will happen is the aluminum will begin to give electrons to the coppers and force the electrons onto the coppers. And the copper becomes a solid copper and it leaves the compound and the aluminum becomes an ionic component of copper sulfate. And so now we have a new compound. So one thing replaces another. That's why it's single replacement. Pay attention to the position. The aluminum is kicking out the copper. Metal is kicking out metal. It's not going to kick out the non-metal part. Right? So pay attention to that. The order is important. Uh, it can also happen that a non-metal can replace another non-metal, in which case it'd be the second half that's changing and the first half that's staying the same. Then you have double replacement. Now, double replacement is a case of where you double date, right? So I have two different compounds, some compound AB and some compound that's another metal with non-metal combination. Well, this is the scenario where you go out double dating with your friend and you each have a date, but as the evening goes along, you're really hitting it off with your friend's date. You're talking about things you have more in common with, you're kind of connecting, uh, and that might seem awkward, except it works out because your friend is really into your date. So it all works out. You end up with two new couples, two different pairings. So we start with a metal, non-metal, another metal, and non-metal. 
Notice who switches. The things in the first place end up switching partners. So the sodium replaces the barium, the barium replaces the sodium. So sodium sulfate, the barium replaces the sodium, so we end up with barium sulfate. The sodium then will go with the chlorines. Okay, so it's important to get the pairings right. Okay, a positive always goes with a negative, a metal with a non-metal, when we're talking about ionic things. Okay. So again, it's sort of the double date switch. Finally, combustion. Combustions where the oxygen twins will bust up any relationship and end up producing two things that both have oxygen in them. Okay, so typically it's a hydrocarbon, carbon and hydrogen. This is how your gasoline in your car engine works. This is how propane in your grill works. Okay, so here's an example with propane. When I react it with oxygen, I always get carbon dioxide and water. So the products, if it's a hydrocarbon, are always carbon dioxide and water, but notice oxygen's in each of them. If it's not that, if it's not a hydrocarbon, there are other things that are hydrides that will kind of fit this pattern as well. So something will end up with oxygen and hydrogen and oxygen will come together to make water. And there is an algebraic sort of looking expression where given the amounts of carbon and hydrogen, you always have X CO2s and Y, uh, y over two H2Os and some mathematical equation to get the number of oxygens. But if you just recognize Hey, it's a hydrocarbon, something with carbon and hydrogen, reacts with oxygen. I always get carbon dioxide and water and then just balance it. That's the easiest way to think about that. Okay, so these are five different patterns that reactions can fall into. And why is that useful information? Well, if we know the first half of reaction, if we know which pattern it is, we can predict what should happen, what the product should be. And from there, we can have a story as to whether is it a reaction that will take place or not? And if so, what should we get out of it?